One day, I found myself in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean without energy following a breakdown of the alternator and defective solar panels. That day, I decided that I had to find a solution. I imagined uh, a clean and intelligent ship capable of optimizing the energy mix that nature makes available to us, equipped with an innovative energy system capable of producing and storing renewable energy through hydrogen. That day was born Energy Observer. The shipping industry is one of the most polluting. 90% of trade is seaborne, creating 2 to 3% of the world's total greenhouse gas emissions. But this boat is on a six year mission around the world using solar, wind, hydrogen, and battery power in an effort to prove that there is a greener way. I'm Emma Keeling here on the River Thames in London to see if the Energy Observer will be able to convince the maritime industry that what they're doing can be cleaned up. The Energy Observer is two years into its journey and has visited 25 countries with 25 to go. <sighs> Official uniform? <laughs> London is the 47th stopover. The boat is a floating laboratory where the crew is experimenting with and refining green technologies. Bonjour. <laughs> How are you? Can you hear something? Can you hear something? Very quiet. <laughs> Very quiet. Very quiet. I can't hear anything because it's running on renewable energy. It is the new world of the mobility. Former Merchant Navy officer Victorian Erusard is the founder and captain of the boat. Since the beginning of the expedition, we have been able to test different technologies in different weather conditions. Which of the technologies has outperformed your expectations? We were nicely surprised by our solar panels as they turned out to be much more adaptable than we initially thought. Reacting very well to difficult weather conditions, a lot of passage and changing temperatures. No sun, no wind. <laughs> Not good for our system. So hydrogen? <laughs> but we have hydrogen on board and battery. The Energy Observer is sponsored by commercial interests and is also supported by the European Commission, UNESCO and IRENA, the International Renewable Energy Agency. You see, here we have the uh, three different kinds of solar panels yeah. uh, that we have this year. Louis Noel Viviers is the development manager. Mm -hmm. Some more here on some uh, on all the vertical you know, areas available. Yeah. So you've got this new generation, they are very light, flexible. This one of the uh, prototypes that we have been designed with the um, National uh, Solar Energy Institute. Mm -hmm. so they are double-faced. They, they take up to 30% of the power from behind. From what, the so that you can get a reflection off the water and absolutely, get power from there? Absolutely. They get the reflection from the water and from the paint because the paint is slightly metallized, which means that they are the, the, the most efficient solar panels on the market today. They are, not, they, are not, they are not on the market, by the way. <laughs> not yet. Do you want uh, to see the wings working? I'd love to see the wings. Okay. The ocean wings are like sails and have been used in the America's Cup race. They complement the electric motors, improving efficiency. In reality, they work like an aeroplane wing, which provides lift, whereas these provide forward motion. Are you excited about this technology? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, this kind of, of profile it is twice as efficient as a standard sail. So, so how does it work? Fully automatically. You just don't do nothing. <laughs> you just push on a button, it raises, it adjusts itself to the best angle, it creates you some apparent wings, so there is a virtuous circle, it creates its own speed, which creates some more wind, which creates some more speed, and then you just add some electricity if you need, and you've got a fabulous mix of energies. If you invest let's say one kilowatt in the motors, you get five or six kilowatts in return.
we think we have saved about 40% of our energy since Tromso in Norway, up to the Spitsberg, back to here. We just believe it is the, the future of the, of the navigation because you can put them on any kind of boat. On board, there are four tanks of hydrogen on either side and a set of 112 kilowatt lithium ion batteries that feed the electric motors. Another set of 18 kilowatt batteries power the facilities. The two systems weigh about the same, but the hydrogen storage contains over seven times more power than the batteries. Altogether, we've got 62 kilos of hydrogen, which provide us two megawatts of energy. So with this energy, we can sail with no wind, with no sun, for about three days and three nights. Why do you store the hydrogen up top? So the uh, storage for hydrogen today needs to be in an open space to have a natural ventilation. Hydrogen is explosive, but these tanks are used on buses around the world, and the boat has its own safety features. So what do you have in place to make sure that everything is safe? Well, first, we have many sensors everywhere. As soon as there is any problem or any abnormal uh, uh, pressure, for instance, it means that there is a risk that there is a leak. So automatically, it will eject all the hydrogen at more than 20 meters high, so that the hydrogen, even if it burns at the contact with the oxygen, it will not burn the wings, because you know they're brand new and we work a lot of them and we don't want to see them like a torch. So now let's have a look at the uh, desal. Desalination. Desalination so, stage, yeah. Salt water into pure water. Absolutely. So many different little hidey holes in this place. What's different about this desalination plant is the first step provides water for the crew, but there are two more steps. And then we've we got the second and the third stages uh, designed to produce the purest water as possible. And this water is then sent to the other hull on the other side to be electrolyzed. Wow. It is electrolyzed over there, then it is sent back in the front uh, compartment to be compressed. And then it is sent back again on the right hull to be put into the bottle, to be stored in the, in the hydrogen bottles. An average efficiency of the system, which is today about 25%, and 25% from the first kilowatt from the sun to the last kilowatt to the propeller, it is the same efficiency as a diesel engine today. The hydrogen is made on board by electrolysis, where an electric current has passed through water, producing hydrogen and oxygen. So it was quite uh, tricky because we don't have a lot of space here and we had to be able to build up this uh, factory able to uh, produce uh, five kilos of pure hydrogen every day. Five kilos of pure hydrogen, it's roughly, it is the same as, let's say, uh, 20 litres of pure gasoline every day. The hydrogen is then fed into the fuel cell. This looks like a giant science project. What are we looking at here? That's just a fuel cell, very, <laughs> very simple fuel cell. All joking aside, a hydrogen fuel cell consists of two electrodes, an anode and a cathode, separated by a membrane. Hydrogen gas is supplied to one side and oxygen from the air supplies the other. Inside the anode, a platinum catalyst splits the hydrogen molecules into positive hydrogen ions and negatively charged electrons. The membrane allows the positively charged hydrogen to pass through, forcing the negative electrons along an external circuit. The movement around the circuit creates an electrical current and heat. Another catalyst in the cathode causes the negatively charged electrons and positively charged hydrogen ions to combine with the oxygen to form water. Is this one of the things that the, you know, when maritime industry people come on board, is this what they get excited about? Is this what they're most interested in? Yeah, because there is no maintenance. There is absolutely no moving parts. Some of these uh, fuel cells have been above 30,000 hours of work with no maintenance. There is no diesel engine in the world able to do this amount of hours. During the next winter, on the other hull on this boat, we will put a new fuel cell, a new generation, a much lighter one, and it will be about 100 kilowatts. Wow. Much more powerful than this one, but it is much um, smaller, compact. It's about five times the same power half of the weight. When I came out of the boat this morning, I thought, how on earth did they figure out 
what energy to use when. When do you store it? When does something get used? Does it happen overnight? Does it happen during the day? Well, all those decisions aren't actually made by the captain. They're made by a giant brain that's hidden underneath here that decides just how energy efficient this boat can be. All the sources of energy is actually are just managed by this big brain here, okay? This is instant production of the uh, hydro energy. You know, if, if there is some current on the river, for instance, and the propellers go the other way around, they produce electricity too. This is a production of the wind turbines or the wings. And this is a production of the fuel cell. What's the cleverest part of, of this hub, this brain, do you think? So the computer will have the forecast of the light, of the sun, of the wind for the next three days, let's say. And it will say, OK, I have this amount of energy in hydrogen. I have this amount of energy in batteries. And I know that there will be a lot of sun tomorrow. But then I will have three days with just rain and heavy wind against me. So it will plan a route Plan a route right. for you to be the most efficient on the, from point A to point B. The, the objective is to be able to provide a system that can be managed by any kind of crew. If we need to have full-time engineers on board, it's a waste of time. You know? It has to be fully automatic. The idea is to, is to convince the vast majority of the uh, maritime uh, community that it is simple and affordable, actually, and very safe. The experimentation doesn't stop. Soon they hope to use a new generation fuel cell in the form of LOHC, liquid organic hydrogen carrier. It's like gasoline, but it is loaded with hydrogen. And it is the same um, density, energetic density as the gasoline. Um, but um, it works with the uh, ambient uh, temperature, with the ambient uh, pressure. So it takes the same room as a, as a gasoline tank. It will be a very big revolution. Captain Erusad sees the energy observer as part of a greater revolution. I simply wanted to show that it is uh, possible to navigate otherwise. And it is a much more effective way to educate politicians, citizens and indu industrialists uh, with a real ship that can be tested and touch rather than uh, a few promising slides of a keynote presentation showing a time in the future. The future must be now.